Hello everyone. In today's case we perform an endodontic procedure through a metal porcelain crown. The referring dentist has already performed the access cavity and comes with a provisional restoration. We remove the temporary restoration with small round burr. In this case, the referring dentist placed a cotton pellet under the temporary filling. Nowadays it is preferable to use Teflon under the temporary filling instead of cotton or sponge pellets. This is because it is much easier to remove and PTFE tape is associated with less bacterial contamination than cotton. The difficulty in measuring working length in crown cases lies in the ineffectiveness of electronic apex locators once the file comes into contact with the metal. Here we get the LAE to work well by not contacting the file with the metal of the crown. Another way is to coat the part of the file that can contact the metal with Teflon and then the locator will work correctly. As we see that the 15K file has a good glide path, we decided to use a 15 retake with 4% taper. After each rotary file we irrigate with sodium hypochlorite and perform patency. In this case with a 15 file. Now we continue with the sequence of the rotate system. We work with 20 file of 5% with brushing movements. If we noticed a lot of pressure in the file and it was difficult for us to reach the working length, we would irrigate and work again with a previous file. We finish the sequence with a 25 to 6% file. After irrigating we will perform the apical gauging. Apical gauging is the last part of confirmation. We carry out this phase with 2% manual files. We calibrate tactilely. We lightly hit the 25 file apically and see that it does not remain trapped, but rather goes down. There we decided that we are going to use a 30 file. Once we have verified that the master cone fits well, we carry out the final irrigation. In this case, we perform ultrasonic, which consists of using ultrasonic energy on attachments that when activated inside the canal produce a movement of the irrigant. The protocol I usually use is simple. First, the canal is filled with hypochlorite and activated for about 30 seconds per canal. The remains generated are then irrigated with 3 milliliters. Second, the canal is filled with EDTA 17% and activated for 30 seconds to 1 minute. As the last irrigation, sodium hypochlorite is used again. 
This serves to neutralize the EDTA and to access the organic tissue that was hiding the smear layer. The first step is to place the cement coated master cone. In this case it is an epoxy resin. Then we sear off the excess of gutta percha. We activate the heat source at 200 degrees Celsius and bring the plugger apically to 3 or 4 millimeters at the working length with light pressure. We will wait 10 seconds maintaining apical pressure and apply heat again, removing the plugger from the canal. Then we compact the gutta percha plug with a fine plugger to compensate for the contraction of the material due to cooling. Normally when we remove the heat plugger, the leftover gutta percha comes with it. In this case it didn't happen. This is because we did not choose the correct plugger. Here I perform a second downpack and then we perform the thermoplastic injection. Finally, we perform the obturation of the middle and coronal third of the canal with the thermoplastic injection. It can be filled in increments of 3 or 4 mm or in one step. It is quite common to create gaps that are usually easily resolved with thermocompactors. To clean the canal chamber I always use burrs with inactive tips such as endos and a lot of alcohol to remove any remaining cement. <laughs> 